we are going to be talking about Malice at the Palace. Mm -hmm. And King, I know we both have some uh, history with this. So we mm -hmm. were actually able to watch this live. And to this day, it's still one of the most groundbreaking events that's ever happened in NBA history. You know, what I remember from the rivalry was, you know, every time we played the Pacers, it was just chippy, tough. Yeah. And they had a tough, hard-nosed team over there just like we did. And, you know, I appreciate every matchup we had against them. We've had a lot of people the past few months here um, asking us to talk about Malice at the Palace. But with us both watching that game live when it happened, and we had just graduated high school because it was the following season. Mm -hmm. um, and we were, I was coming into this game on a high, bro. I was looking forward to this game. Let's rewind to the Eastern Conference Finals, right? The previous year when the Pistons and the Pacers met up for what was a six-game dogfight. It looked like these two teams were going to be battling each other for years, like year after year, coming to the series just from watching them. And that season, the Pacers, man, they were a very, very good team. They finished with, I think it was 61 wins, 61 or 62, at least 60, first in the East. And they were led by Ron Artest and Jermaine O'Neal. Now, I'm going to be honest, bro. I feel like Jermaine O'Neal gets overlooked way too often because in his prime, he was, in my opinion, in my opinion, he was a top five power forward in his league. He was unguardable in the post. He could score a will against anybody, anybody. It was just that his, his window was so small, so he gets overlooked. But I think, I really believe that the Pacers would have also beaten the Lakers that same season in the finals. And that's taking nothing away from my team. Right. But I feel like the Pacers just matched up with them just as well as we did. And so when you think about Ron Artest, right, he was one of the best wing players in the league, not just defenders, but players. And he actually won DPOY that year. We won the championship. We beat him in the conference finals. That was a bloodbath, bro. It was one of the most physical series I've ever seen. The offense was ugly and hard to watch, but that's just because the defense was, was a masterpiece on both sides. And it was a slow paced, half court game both teams knew what the other wanted to do on offense it really just came down to will and execution and i think down the stretch the pitchers just out executed them just just a little bit better than the pacers did and we won six games i think the score was like something like 69 65 <laughs> in game six i knew for a fact though even though we won i still knew that in the end it was going to be a problem and what made it worse is that it, they were coached by rick carlisle and he had just been fired by the pistons the year before Right, because we had got swept by the Nets in the conference finals, and we got he got fired, and we brought Larry Brown in. So there was a huge chip on his shoulder too when it came to us. And that run, our finals run, man, I was I was more concerned with the Pacers than I was the Lakers because of how they matched up. Once we beat the Pacers, bro, I felt that we could and should beat whoever we played in the finals, whether it was the Lakers or the Spurs. Because yeah. if you remember, many people thought that it should have been the Spurs that year. In the finals you know that was the same year that Derek Fisher made that shot that turnaround prayer jumper with like 0.6 left on the clock that won that game that was that series so and that in large part determined that series for the Lakers and the Spurs so a lot of people feel like the Spurs should have been in that finals but I do think that that 2014 would have beaten the Spurs that season because the 014 was different from 05 we talk about it all the time right right we lost our depth Okor, Corliss, Mike James, they were all gone. Only person we added was McDice. And he was good for us, but he's just one guy. So looking back, that Indiana team was dangerous. So what were your thoughts on Indiana? Did they, did they scare you? Did you feel as if they were a threat? What was your thoughts about Indiana? Indiana was right along with those New Jersey's. You know, back then it was the Beastern Conference, right? You yeah. Know, now it's the Eastern Conference, but back then it was the Beastern Conference. <laughs> And, you know, those teams, like I said, they were built similar, you know what I'm saying? So it always was a chess match in those games. Right. And it made it even more exciting. But at the same time, you nervous, man, because you don't want your team to lose a series. So right. I appreciate that type of playoff basketball more than anything. Man, that team was a force. And just to, to you know, add to what you said about Jermaine O'Neal, Jermaine O'Neal was that dude, you know, yeah. what I'm saying? at the point in his career. You know, these dudes was real forces legit forces man 100 percent. you know like i said man that team that team was built to go up against the pistons man that team was built right you know for yeah. our team to, to you know pull it out squeak it out like we was doing you know besides this night that we get ready to talk about yeah <laughs> man it was exciting so the date was november 19th 
2004 on a Friday night. I'll never forget it. It was Bill and Beer and George Blaha on the local broadcast, but this was actually an ESPN broadcast. Um, yes, ESPN. There was a time when the Pistons were on national broadcast pretty regularly, and it happened when they were at the peak of their powers during this run. And it was the first matchup since the conference finals that we played them. You could feel the tension through the TV screen. At least I could. You could feel Indiana was chomping at the bit. They were licking their chops. They were on a mission. It kind of reminded me, bro. It reminded me of Denver, Minnesota. Right? Last year, Denver, what? They beat Minnesota in the playoffs. And they root to their title. Mm -hmm. But you could see Minnesota was coming. They were mm -hmm. coming. They were going to be back. And Minnesota was best constructed to beat Denver. And they came back on a mission this year. And they beat the champ. Right? So, right. like Minnesota... Indiana was constructed to beat Detroit, who would also have beaten Indiana the previous year and route to their championship. So, would Indiana have beaten us in the playoffs that following season? Who knows? Could they have? Yes. But to make matters worse, 2004 offseason, the Pacers went and got Steven Jackson, man. Yeah. All the smoke, Steven Jackson. And he was still in his prime, still a very good player. At that time and he fit the pacers like a glove bro he was their missing piece the same way she was our missing piece so from tip off bro i knew the pacers were serious they came out looking like a team that it seemed like they came out like they felt they should have beat us you know they were just a little bit better than we were in every aspect they were a little faster a little more physical tougher more crisp on both ends and stephen jackson bro he gave them another offensive weapon in a defensive matchup that made it very very tough for us it just looked like the better team that night right. so that night they blew us out <laughs> 97 to 82 reggie miller didn't even play that game that's the crazy part he had a broken hand and so they didn't even have all their guns and they right. still were beating us pretty handily on our home court which had me worried so to be fair like reggie was older he wasn't the same reggie miller right he was in his last season but he still was effective but it was the only time i was really worried bro about another team possibly being better than yeah. we were up to that point in our run. Yeah. So that brings us to the play, right? The play that actually caused Malice at the Palace. And for context, just a couple of weeks before it actually happened, Ben Wallace's brother James had passed away. And Ben has openly acknowledged this. And he actually said that he was at the time like a powder keg that was just waiting to get triggered by something. Mm-hmm. Into Ryan Artest, <laughs> right? Before that hard foul on Ben, Pacers guard Jamal Tinsley, I'll never forget it. Jamal Tinsley, who I call Mr. Instigator, um, he encouraged Ryan Artest to take a shot at Ben. Because I guess Artest had felt that Ben had taken a shot at him earlier in the game. Mm. And so Artest was like in his mind winding up. But here's the thing. This is the crazy part. Steven Jackson actually heard what Tinsley said to Artest. And as a result... Steven Jackson was like, nah, bro. Mm. So Steven Jackson on, on that play, he picked up Ben Wallace on defense. That wasn't his man, but he picked him up. He was trying to keep our test away from him. Steven Jackson, he didn't want no problems. He didn't even want no smoke. He was trying to prevent smoke. So when Ben goes to the basket, our test, for some reason, helps off of his guy and basically like punches Ben in the back and pushes him at the same time. Right? He didn't follow him straight up. He like caught him from behind. Mm -hmm. And so the game was out of reach. It was obviously more than just a foul. It meant something. You know, he was trying to get some get back. So, and I'm telling you, bro, you can probably remember this. When he fouled him, Ben Wallace turned around so freaking quick. And when he did that, I knew something was about to happen. I knew it wasn't going to be pretty. Just from his react, he turned around so fast. Like, oh, word? When he turned around, you saw Pacers players trying to get over to him because they saw what was going on too. So with that, we are going to go ahead and play it. Our test for 24. So this is the previous play. As a sellout crowd is now pretty empty here. Steven Jackson with a pair of free throws. It's 97 Okay, now watch out, watch, watch Steven Jackson. He's right here. He's guarding Ben. He's telling him, no, stay away. I got Ben. He lets him go. And that's when our chest followed him. And you see how fast you see, you see how fast? Did you see how fast Tinsley turned around? And tried to get over there when Ben <laughs> Look at Ben, instantly turn around. He's trying to come over. Too late. And from here, look how small the referee is, bro. You need to be referee.
You have to be half retarded to take yeah. a shot at Ben Wallace, bro. Man. Which Ron Artest is half retarded. <laughs> <laughs> Makes sense. And now, see, Ron Artest is in, now he's just he's trying to taunt Ben at this point. Yeah. Steven Jackson is, is trying to score up with Derek. Derek I think Coleman. it's also a little bit of shot going through him, too, at the same time. Man. Probably so. Pushed in the head and neck like that. Probably so. You know what I respect? I'm going to go back a little bit. You know what I respect about this? Reggie Miller had a broken hand. Mm -hmm. And look at him, protecting his guy. No, no, no. Y'all not getting over here. I respect that. Yeah. I respect that. Steven Jackson still screaming at the Pistons. Derek Coleman pulling Ben back. You can hear uh, Steven Jackson yelling, what are you doing? Right. So watch our test. I remember this. <laughs> she wanted to smoke. <laughs> our test takes, you see that? He took the he took the, yeah. the headset off of <laughs> So now he's just taunting. Now he's just taunting. And Reggie's like, bro, stop. <laughs> what are you doing? <laughs> And then I think Ben threw his headband at yeah. our test. Yeah. And now he's laying back down. He was just, man. Our test was clowning, man. Ben's still trying to get over there. He's throwing all his wristbands in the crowd. And now our test goes into the stands. Here we go. And that's so crazy. This is so crazy. I'm going to go back just a little bit. This is crazy because the guy that hit him, his name is John Green. It wasn't even the guy that Artest attacked. Right, I know. It was the wrong guy. Innocent bystander. You see this guy right here in the blue who's behind Artest? Yeah, that's the one that threw that's it. That's the one that, this is the guy that threw it. But Artest goes after the wrong guy. And now this, and now he's grabbing Artest after he... <laughs> Wow. Boy. Now watch Steven John Green, the same guy. Watch the same guy. This is the crazy part. You're going to see him try to punch him, our chest. He's trying to punch our chest. Insane. This is not good for the NBA. And then he realizes, oh, this is it's a yeah, bunch of fans yeah, here. Let me, let me yeah, get I'll up out of here before you, I get jumped. Let me get up out of here. <laughs> <laughs> Wow. And then this fan comes out of nowhere. I mean, he brought that on himself. Why are you walking on the court, bro? That's crazy. Yeah, it could have this could, this could have been really bad, bro. If this was downtown Detroit, it would have been a wrap. It would have been a wrap, bro. It would have been. Yeah, it, it would have been out there uh, beating up on those Auburn Hillian. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Now, facts. If in Detroit, it'd have been a problem for real, for real. I'm glad it wasn't, bro. Get mad, cause everybody would not have made it out of there. You ain't running up in the crowd. No, nah, not at all. Not at all. This was a Pier Six brawl at the Palace tonight. Wow. It's like every time I watch it, I see something different. It's Chuck Person. Two Pacers in the crowd fighting fans. Yep. Insane, bro. Fourth and they, 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 they lit the these fools like up, bro. They lit them up. They lit them up. Oh, yeah. yeah Heading into that tunnel. He got everything. Him, they were throwing chairs at Jermaine O'Neal. Popcorn. Beer. Look at this. Look at this, man. Yeah. But Jermaine O'Neal was silly trying to, what are you trying to fight with him for, bro? That's a losing battle. <laughs> a lot of hands and feet. That, that's what's going to happen. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's just, bro. Yeah, I could not, I could not believe this was happening, bro. Watching this live. I was sitting on the couch. I couldn't even say nothing. I just was sitting on the couch with my mouth open, bro. Like, bro. And of course, it was on ESPN for the whole world to see. This, see, this wasn't during social media time where, you know what I'm saying? You got 30 different angles in five minutes as soon as this right. happens. Right. This was on the news and on every media outlet you can think of. 
Bro, imagine, this happened, imagine this happened today. Imagine this happened today. Man. <laughs> it better still. The game has been called. There's Darvin Hill. Larry Brown was trying to grab the PA mic to calm down the crowd. But they wouldn't turn it on for him. Wow. I don't think they threw anything at Rick. Which I was happy to see. Because he didn't right. he didn't have nothing to do with that. Coach Carla. Yeah, a lot of people were still heartfelt about him anyway, because they didn't want him to get fired. Yeah, right. Exactly. Good point. That's a great point. Great point. Here's a better yeah. replay. Right here. Talk after that. here we go. He turned around so quick. Quickly tried to get over there because he already knew it was coming. Rasheed saved this situation, bro. Right the there. Right, right there. there. And he Ron pushed Ben out of the way. Ron Artest is the type of dude that that'll run back up on you. He ain't run back up on Ben. No, 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 no. As soon as he fouled him, he knew he made a mistake because he put his head down. As soon as he fouled Ben and Ben turned around, he dropped his head. He didn't want them problems, bro. He wanted those problems. <laughs> That's wild. There's John Green right there. In the blue. And so the wrong guy got hit. So the wrong guy's friend tried to help by throwing beer at, at our test and then Jackson came over and hit him. And now you see John Green and Blue hitting our test. Look at that. Man. Great. And Mike Brown is grabbing Mike Brown is grabbing him too. Insane. And then he realizes what's going on and he gets up out of there. <laughs> That's wild, B. Wild, bro. <laughs> Is it a player? And no matter what happens, yeah, that's wild. Go into the stands. That is the Look at this jersey. Jersey almost torn in half. Sport is concerned. You can All that pulling. Yeah. Like, what are you doing? What are you doing? Here's a fan walking up to our test. Why would you walk up on. <laughs> Ron swings at him. All right. Look at this fool. That's when, that's when Jermaine O'Neal came and laid him out. And you know what, bro? He's lucky he slipped because if he don't slip, that dude is out cold. Yep. Insane. It never ceases to amaze me how often I watch it. It never ceases to amaze me what took place. Okay. Did you know that um, Ben Wallace's brother was banned from attending games at the yeah. Palace? Yeah. For beating up, or not beating up, yeah. but he was punching Fred Jones. Yes. In the stands. Work, working him out, bro. Work I remember that like yesterday. <laughs> working him out. In so think stands. about it. That was also his brother had passed too. You see what I'm saying? Because yeah, Ben's right. yeah. brother had. So that was his brother as well. So emotions were flying all out of control, bro. On top of that, you them two big country boys, bro. Like, what are y'all doing? Like, all of, all doing? of Ben's brothers. All yeah. of Ben's brothers are like this. It ain't like, just Ben. Bro. All of them. Yeah. Like these dudes chop wood, bro. Like, right. Yeah, they country, doing, bro. Y'all city boys, man. <laughs> they country strong. Yeah, they country they strong. Strong, man. Yeah, yeah. No so way. it's it's crazy because Ben's brother was actually banned from attending games at the palace. I don't know if that was upheld once Tom Gores took over, um, because you know Bill Davidson was still the owner at that time. I don't know if that still is upheld, but I thought that was crazy that he got banned for life from going to yeah. at least the palace. So I have a confession to make, bro, and. I have not ever said this publicly before, ever. I'm gonna say it now, though. As the brawl was taking place, right? As horrifying as that was, like knowing it was a national game, and seeing our test when I saw our test go into the stands, Stephen Jackson go into the stands and hit a fan, and I saw Jermaine O'Neal do what he did. I was low key happy. Wow. I was low key happy. Because like I mentioned, this was the only team that I thought could and perhaps would beat us in the playoffs. So when this happened, I knew the Pacers were cooked. Yeah. They were done. Championship hope has gone bye-bye. Season over. No threat to us. Now, like, now, that I'm, now that I'm older, my mindset has changed. Now I'm like, no, nah, I want to play them in full strength. I don't want no excuses. I want to so prove now, that it wasn't a fluke last year. So, you know back then, so back then, you was a... 
a, you had a, like a LeBron type mentality, and now you got a Jordan. mentality. You're not doing that. No, nah, I don't. I don't know what you're talking about. You speaking a different language right you now. The easy route, and then but now you want to earn it. When does LeBron know? ever said he wanted the easy route? But I'm I thought another story. I thought another story. You had to throw LeBron in there at some point. I, I was waiting on that. So anyway, getting back to what I was saying, before I was rudely interrupted. Um, <laughs> now that I'm older, I'm like, no, I want to see both teams at full strength. But at the time, I knew that the Pacers, as long as the Pistons didn't do nothing crazy, right? I knew that we were going to be in, in better shape than they were. Let's take a look at the suspensions. Because you got to remember, Adam Silver was not the commissioner. This was David Stern, mm -hmm. who ruled with an iron fist. Mm -hmm. He was known for, like, doling out heavy fines and suspensions any time there was any violence on the court. If you fight, you know you're going to, you know you got something coming. Serious coming. So... Let's throw Indiana suspensions, right? Our test was suspended the rest of the season. This is November. Regular season just started. So he missed mm -hmm. the entire year. Jermaine O'Neal got 30 games, which was later arbitrarily cut down to 15, which I don't know why. And then Steven Jackson had 25. Anthony Johnson, I think he had five games. And Reggie Miller had one for leaving the bench. The Pistons, on the other hand, Ben Wallace had a whopping... Six games. Six games. <laughs> <laughs> Chauncey got one. Um, right. Eldon Campbell, he got one game. Uh -huh. And Derek Coleman got one game. And they all got one game for leaving the bench. Because, you know, Chauncey ain't fighting nobody. He not. That's not what he does. Right. Um, that crippled Indiana. And we got out unscathed. Like, David Stern actually, he actually said, after those suspensions were handed out, he said, the line is drawn. And my guess is that it won't happen again. At least not to anybody who wants to be in our league. So he was trying to make a point, bro. Like, that's how David Stern moved when it comes to, like, he just, he had no chill. He wanted to make an example out of these guys. Right. And that's, that's what he did. So it's just crazy, though, because the Pistons got lucky, man. All the suspensions that were combined for the Pistons only added up to a third of what Jermaine O'Neal's entire suspension was. Right. So that's why I was happy, right? Like, I knew the season was over. And even though O'Neal, Jackson, and Reggie, would come back later in the season. Our chest was gone for the year. They had a lot of ground to make up as far as getting back into NBA shape, um, getting reacclimated, you know, with their teammates, all that different stuff. You want to like when you go into the playoffs, you want to be reinforcing what you already built over the season. They couldn't do that. They had to on the fly try to incorporate all these guys and make it work, and it just didn't work for them. And right. so. Like I said, they did win one game against us in the playoffs because we did play them in the playoffs again that season. But I think they only won one game. Maybe they got two, but it wasn't. They didn't have their team. And last thing, John Green. The crazy part about this whole thing, bro, is like if he doesn't do that, if he doesn't throw the cup, and if it doesn't connect, because he wasn't he wasn't in the front row. Right. He was in this. He was a ways back, probably ten rows back. Mm -hmm. So for him to land that. What are the odds of that? If he doesn't land that, none of this happens. Like, our chest doesn't go into the stands and attack the wrong person. Uh, Steven Jackson doesn't attack his friend who hit our chest with the beer. Jermaine O'Neal doesn't hit the fan on the court because there's no fan on the court. So, like, had that beer not been thrown, you're probably looking at what? A double tech? Maybe Ben gets ejected, but it don't matter because the game's over. Right. It's just crazy how the domino effect played out because that one action, bro, 20 years later is still being talked about. Yeah. You know, just sitting here watching this and as, a, as an adult now. Yeah. Imagine yourself being a fan during that time. If you're a fan in the crowd and you see these dudes coming up in the crowd. Right. Bro, the fade that they would have caught if I was <laughs> in the crowd. <laughs> to have the audacity to actually do that is just crazy to me, man. It just right. never gets... Oh, every time I see that, it's like, bro, like, what are you thinking? Like, anybody could have did anything to you in them stands. You know what I'm saying? You mm -hmm. could have, you could have got your career ended in them stands if the right person right. Could get hold of you. Exactly. You know? So, and, but we are we talking about Ryan Artest, right? This is not a guy that's a logical thinker. <laughs> you know, what I'm especially so, back then. Right. This dude tried to kill James Harden with an elbow. You know what I'm saying? Tried to go after Kobe. This man changed his name to Metal World Peace. <laughs> so this is not a logical human being we're talking about but Man. still yeah to have the audacity to run up in that crowd i mean ben wallace is one thing right that's basketball i mean come on this is the pistons this, like, this is what we do you know mm -hmm. but yeah you you out of your mind bro 
Like it, it's no way I'm running up in the crowd and trying to fight everybody in the crowd because somebody threw a cup. Like you. Well, see you know what that was. Go ahead. Go ahead. You see people throwing cups, you know, at, at, at all type of events, especially say things. You're a wrestling fan. You see them right. throwing drinks in these people's faces, all type of stuff, right? Mm-hmm. You got to be able to withstand that, bro. You I made do. a dirty play. These fans are pissed. You laid on the table, right? That's insulting to them. They threw a cup at you, but running up into the damn crowd is like, bro, that's next level stupid for me. It is, but uh, I, I I know why he did it. His ego was hurt. His ego took a shot because he didn't do anything back to Ben. He got pushed, and everybody's trying to protect him, which means he can't protect himself from Ben Wallace. Yeah, and that messed with his ego. That's why he was sitting on the scores table trying to taunt Ben. He was trying to put that anger somewhere. He was trying to retaliate in another way, in any way outside of hurting Ben, right? He wasn't going to try to go back at Ben like you said. What's the next best target? He was on some bully stuff. Mm-hmm. He messes with people who are smaller than him, who he thinks can't hurt him. Of course. You know what I'm saying? That's why I said he ain't run up on Ben Wallace. <laughs> nah. Yeah. Nah. Yeah. But that all brain, his teammates... The brain was working then. All his teammates ran up on Ben to keep him away. Right. <laughs> they know what's up. And see, that's the thing. He know like, them doing that, he knows that they think that's needed. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. He knows that they're coming to my defense. Like, that must mean that they don't think that I am safe from Ben without them. Right. Ego. It messed with his ego. That's why he did what he did. Yeah. From my perspective, at least. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We seen the bad boys do some things. Like I said, Ben Wallace is one thing, but running up in the crowd is just overboard. You know what I'm saying? We we've seen some things happen on the court. We've seen also seen Isaiah Thomas get his whole eye split. Right. We've seen that too. So right. I mean, as a little dude, you're not gonna keep getting, you know, beat up by these big dudes. You're gonna swing on somebody. Right. But that's the thing. Isaiah is he attacked somebody who was twice his size. Yeah. He didn't go after a little fan. Somebody who they knew he knew wouldn't be able to protect himself. You see what I'm saying? It's, it's different. I like I say, I never blame the person who reacts. Right. You know what I'm saying? Don't right. blame the person that reacts. It's the person you know that that's starting it. Yeah. I mean, the bad boys. A lot of incidents you see them highlights of the bad boys doing this and doing that. Man, y'all don't know how dirty the damn Celtics was, bro. Man, the Celtics was dirty, bro. Man. Kevin McHale and them boy. Kevin McHale was dirty, bro. He could hoop. He could hoop. In my opinion, he has the best forward for a big man outside of Hakeem Olajuwon ever. But he was dirty, bro. That was, and that's what the Pistons learned from. The same way, mm-hmm. the Pistons taught the Knicks. Yeah. Same thing. Passing the torch, they were first. That's who the Pistons yeah. learned from. And then the Pistons taught the Bulls, and then they taught them, like after we lost to the Bulls that first time, we were still in the running every year, like 91, 92. We were still getting to the conference semis, but then that's when the Knicks started to cut, make their rise, built off the same template that we had learned from Boston. So it's all cyclical. It all <laughs> it all moves in a circle. So it didn't start with us, and it didn't end with us. We got two teams we just mentioned who came before and after us. That's just how it goes. The Pistons, they learned it. They implemented it. It worked. The Knicks took it. The yeah. Bulls took it. They learned it. They implemented it. It worked. That'll be etched in stone forever. Yeah. It's malice at the palace, man. If, wow. you, if you say to any sports fan, just say the word malice, they mm-hmm. can finish the phrase. Yep. That's how well known around the world it is. If you are born... And older than five years old, you right. probably know what this is. Right. It literally was everywhere. Everywhere. Yeah. And the way that yeah. they painted the picture, it, you know, just made it even worse because it's like, bro, yeah, you know, Ben Wallace retaliated, but it wasn't our fault that, that these dudes ran into the stands and started fighting people. Right. You know what I'm saying? So they tried to put it all on Detroit at that time. And that's why I was so mad with the media. Right. Even our own radio station back then. Yep. Just putting it on us. 100%. That's why I still don't have no respect for our radio station today. At mm, all. That's like a good point, bro. On the ticket. You're right. Man, Even I remember back then. all of that. I remember when they didn't have no faith in the Pistons beating the Lakers. None of that. This is all in our city. Yeah. So when everybody be running around celebrating like, oh, the 04 Pistons, I remember this, that, and that. Man, people ain't have faith in the Pistons like that. No. I remember like yesterday. 
You're right. Like, no, you're 100 percent correct. It, it, God, God rest his soul. But even my pops didn't. Mm. You know what I'm saying? It was that deep. And when they won, that's why the climax of them winning was where it was at, man. Because right. nobody thought that they would do that. You're right. And they still didn't want to give us our respect. Even when we like they didn't want to give us respect as a basketball team, first of all. Mm-hmm. Because we weren't good enough, and then when we finally won, now they they don't want to give us respect as far as our character as a city. You know, this is what they do with Detroit was the narrative. You know what I'm saying? Like that that was the narrative. Yeah. So I understand, like you said, things get thrown all the time, and it doesn't make it right. But the number one rule for every athlete, they know this: you do not go outside of those lines. Because when you do, you're no longer protected. You saw Ronald Tess when he realized what he was doing, and he saw myriads of fans like quote let me get up out of here i don't care how many weights you lift i don't care how big you are, i don't care how strong you are it's twenty thousand people in here bro mm-hmm. you trying to get out of here alive or not at that point nobody had any chill you see what <laughs> i'm saying like you already in the file ben wallace hard you already squaring up with lindsey hunter if you steven jackson squared up with lindsey hunter and Derek coleman you know what i'm saying you already taunting ben wallace after you already fouled him hard right nah bro <laughs> nah what you expect Again, be fortunate that it was in Auburn Hills. Just Bro, you don't want the city. Man, on it would like that. It man, yeah, it would have it would have been a lot more footage. It would have been a lot more. It'd have been that camera would have been footage. rolling way. Yeah, that team bus would have been in trouble. It'd have been a lot going on. It would have been scary, bro. You would have had people following. Like, now I'm I'm glad. I'm actually glad it happened there. Everybody is still alive to tell their own version of the story, right or wrong. Mm-hmm. And at the end of the day, it's bigger than basketball. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. It's about people's lives and being. Safe. They actually talked about that. Stephen Jackson actually talked about that. Like we were afraid for. Our, he said we were afraid for our lives when he got back on the court. Security wasn't beefed up like it was. Like it really just came down to the fans just having some level of restraint. Because yeah. th- at that point, if you come into our territory, we are gonna go into your territory, and it's way more of us than it is y'all. It wouldn't have been enough security to stop that. Like when, when 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 national championship games are won and the crowds flood the court, what if that would have happened? Who's getting out of there? You see what I'm saying? You you wouldn't even be able to find them because there's so many people on the court. He he blanked out and he he's lucky. On the flip side of that, it's good to see all of these brothers now mm-hmm. as friends on podcasts. You know, just remembering as being young and dumb you know right. what I'm saying? you know on right. the flip side of things them being able to mend those relationships man and become some of the best of friends because that's what you want to see you know we we look at some of the other relationships that never got fixed you look at mike and isaiah never fixed right look how long it took before we seen the sit down between uh magic johnson and isaiah or you know uh kobe and shaq, kobe and shaq right you know what i'm saying so right you want right. to see that. You want to see the the brotherhood, the, the maturity come out of these guys and say, "Hey, man, we was we was young and dumb during those times." Yeah, because a lot of those guys are friends, man. Yeah, like Sheed and Stephen Jackson, they're friends. Rip and Stephen Jackson, they're friends. That's why I was so odd in the moment, and they talked about that. Like in the moment, they're like, "Yeah, we friends, but we gotta ride for our guys right now." But once the crowd started getting involved, then the brotherhood aspect came back, and they're like. Then you saw Pistons players trying to get Pacers players out of the sands, protecting them. Mm-hmm. At first, it was like we, it was us against y'all. But when the yep. crowd came involved, now it's all of us versus them. Even though it's our home crowd, we want to make sure everybody's safe. They were scared, man. Like Jermaine O'Neal, Stephen Jackson, they were afraid, bro. And they appreciated, Stephen Jackson said he appreciated Rasheed Wallace coming to his defense. Right. He said that. He said, I appreciate Sheed coming to my defense because he didn't have to do that. But we was boys. That's what right. boys do. So she had to flip his brain from I'm a Detroit Piston to this is our NBA brotherhood. I'll give him credit for that. Dress up, bless up, step up and get it. Lace up, face up, I'm here to win it. It's for my daddy and the team coming with me. Headed for the championship even if the road is long. Legends pay the way for us. Legends see nothing in this world. Take it from us Don't underestimate our generation When you see us coming for ya And when you 
knock me down, I'm getting back up Cause when I step on the floor, you know your time's up I'm on my way up and I'm not gonna stop We headed straight to the top in the know I gotta face it, I got no time to wait